Oh! <laughs> uh, new series, new look. Good evening and welcome to TV Pop! Richard Osman reveals his secret new series since leaving Pointless. BBC Breakfast viewers blast obnoxious Nagamanchetti for unwatchable grilling of Health Secretary. Mmm, <laughs> delicious burnt Health Secretary. Did you get it? Yeah. And EastEnders' James By reveals he and his wife have discussed the Strictly curse after intense warning. Mastermind now on BBC Two, and it was the start of a new series. Yes, that's right. The 2022 slash 23 series of Mastermind has begun. I was surprised to see that one of the contestants was a cowboy, though. Yeehaw! I hope to be the first cowboy to win Mastermind. It'll be in it'll be in Mastermind history after fifty years. Yeehaw! His name was Davy Garrett. Not very cowboy, is it? Hmm. He was a community volunteer, and his specialist subject was the Philip Marlowe novels of Raymond Chandler. Another contestant was Ben Spicer, who was a bar manager, and his specialist subject was Peaky Blinders. Mm. The first question was, what was the name of the pub bought by Thomas Shelby for his older brother that the family used as one of their bases throughout the series? The answer was, of course, the garrison. And bar manager, first question, about a pub. I was, like, meant for him, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, it's nice that, when the first question you get in a quiz show is, uh, especially for you. Yeah, nice feeling, that. Davy got 14 points in his specialist subject round. And Ben got... 15 points! So close, isn't it? When contestant Ruth Gibbons was asked in her general knowledge round, what three letter palindromic word is the usual term for an adult female sheep? I thought it was a little bit cheeky of her to say the answer was Clive! You're calling the mastermind host an adult female sheep? That's very cheeky indeed. Oh? Oh, she was answering the question. <laughs> Silly me. At the end of the episode, Ben won with a total of 26 points! Which meant he went through to the semi-finals! Hurrah! Dubai Hustle now on BBC Three, and in this episode, sales broker Ellie told sales broker Megan that she and a guy called Billy went to the desert, had a campfire and picnic, and then he asked her to be his girlfriend. Oh. Megan thought that was very romantic, and I agree. Ellie and Megan both agreed that everybody loves Billy. Now, that's not really true. Not everybody loves Billy, because there are many people in the world who don't know who Billy is. You know what I mean? So, right, if, if, you, if there was a complete stranger and they met Billy in the street, right, Billy would say, Hey, you know me? I'm Billy. And the stranger would say, who? 
you know, Billy from Dubai Hustle. No, I still don't know who you are. But oh, come on! Haven't you got a telly in your house? Uh, no. Oh, forget it then. I'm off. You see, not everybody loves Billy. Meanwhile, Chris and Archie were taking a car out for a test drive, and they were talking about Archie's date with Amy from the office. Wait a minute. Amy from the office? Toby's ex-girlfriend? Amy from the American office? Oh. Oh, yes. She was Toby's ex-girlfriend. So now... She's going out with Archie. Ah, well done, Amy. Now, where were they going, I wonder? A restaurant, picnic on the beach, to the park. Oh. Hello? Paddle boarding? Okay. Bye. That wouldn't be my first idea of a date. One of the three things I said already would be, but paddleboarding? Hmm, not so much. Meanwhile again, sales broker Lucas was looking for an agent. Then he met property investor Nicole, who owns about nine villas. Nine villas? That's a nine-week holiday for her. She is invested in villas because she believes in land. Well, that's good. Otherwise, you wouldn't believe what you were walking on. <laughs> Could you imagine, right, um, if she could, people would see her walking in the sky. They'd say, Here, Nicole, why are you walking in the sky? Come on down here. No, because I don't believe in land. You don't believe in land? You mad woman. Well, some people believe in things that other people don't. So, you're the problem with that. No, no, Nicole, you carry on. Now, going back to Mastermind, this year sees the 50th anniversary of the program, and Clive Myrie said that lots of people have sat in the famous black chair for the last 50 years. Well, he has to remember that black chairs are quite a common thing, because there were plenty of them in the house that Lucas was looking at. Look at these pictures! You see, Clive? Don't make black chairs a rare thing. They're quite common, you know. I was pleased to see that the house also came with a little bird. Now I know that that house will be very expensive, but surely that bird will be very cheap. It's a joke! Then along came Archie and Amy's date, but unfortunately, it didn't go so well, because A. Archie was late, he was filling in contracts, and B. Neither of them had any professional paddle boarding experience. Have a look at this.
They should have gone to a nice restaurant instead. Although, they did go to the beach, and I did suggest the beach, but they didn't have a picnic with them. <laughs> Later, Archie and Chris got an email asking if they would be interested in doing the 24-hour desert challenge, in which they have to stay awake for 24 hours being physical in the desert. Archie said that spending 24 hours in the desert with a lot of Bear grills wannabes is something that he doesn't want to be doing. Then why on earth is he doing it? He should have fought twice. And when Chris was asked about the challenge, he said he was questioning himself on why he agreed to do it. Well, that's because he wants to do as many stupid things as he can. He wants to be the Guinness World Record holder for doing the most stupidest things. In fact, he's got a book out. Well, I haven't got the published copy, but uh, I have got a. Uh, I've got this list here. It doesn't say on the front, but this is Chris's list of stupid things to do. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, so we've got spending 24 hours in the desert. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Um, applying for Big Brother. Hmm, fair enough. Uh, what else do we have? Touching fungus. Hmm, now that is stupid. Uh, is there any more? Playing on the road. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And is there any more? Um, burying himself alive. Ooh, that's a bit dark. And uh, sitting on an activated electric fence. Yeah. And uh, one more here. Going on Dubai Hustle. Now, nah, that is stupid. If you hadn't done that, you wouldn't have to go for all that hustle. Chris's book of stupid things to do, everyone. One challenge that the challengers had to do was the burpee broad jump challenge. And if you don't know what that is, let me show you. So it's... It's like a press up and then... You jump forward! Ah. I'm not sure if I've got that correct, but I did my best. Whew. When the rules for that challenge were explained, lead coach Marcus asked if there were any questions. And I can tell you that there was a question. And that came from all the challengers. Can we go home now? I want to go to McDonald's. I'm starving. And I want to go to Brewdogs because I'm thirsty. Can we go home now is a very good question indeed. The Great British Bake Off now on Channel 4. And it was Biscuit Week this week. During the introduction interviews, like at the start of the episode, contestant Sabira said, Who makes biscuits nowadays? You would usually get it in the supermarket. Well, there's a simple answer to that question. The bakers who bake the biscuits for the supermarket, of course! Honestly. That's who? The signature challenge this week was the bakers had to bake 18 identical decorative macarons and they had two hours to complete the challenge. Baker's Janus was approximate with the amount of things that can go wrong with macarons. 87, he said. Is his brain a calculator? 87? <laughs> I would have thought either 80, 85, or 90, but no, 87. 
Why 87, Janos? It's either his brain's a calculator, or he's a very good counter. It could be anything, really. Anyway, he planned his macarons to look like watermelons because his inspiration was Brighton Beach. And he asked this question. What's better to have cold watermelons on the beach on a hot sunny day? Well, the answer to that question is a picnic on the beach on a hot sunny day or an ice cream on the beach on a hot sunny day. Those are two pretty good answers if you don't like watermelons. When it came to the tasting, the outside was unfortunately quite dry. Mm. But thankfully, Janus knew that was wrong, and so he agreed with Paul and Prue. Whew. Now there are two macarons that are enough to earn the Paul Hollywood handshake! Yes! Two bakers got the Paul Hollywood handshake in week two! I mean, I know it's early for the Paul Hollywood handshake. Well, I think it's early, but... A huge congratulations to the two bakers I'm about to mention. There was Dawn's Toy Shop Yarns with strawberry ma mascarpone with cream filling that looked like yo-yos. And there was also Maxie's Baby Daisies with raspberry and mascarpone cream and salted caramel flavours that looked like daisies. Mmm. They both sound delicious. Now, I like Dawn's Toy Shop Yarns, but then I like Maxie's Baby Daisies. But which is better? There's only one way to find out. Fight! <laughs> See you after the break. Come on, Dawn's Toy Shop Yarns! Welcome back to TV Burp. Simon Cowell reveals X Factor production bosses once turned him down for a job. GMT's Ross Kelly unrecognizable 20 years after leaving this morning. And Richard Hammond says Jeremy Clarkson stopped talking to him after he told him of a new hobby. And now it's time to talk about an old TV burp favourite. Emmerdale! And I was surprised to see Jim Broadbent in this episode of Emmerdale. Elsewhere, Bernice took Liam to her nail bar, nail bar, nail bar. After the trauma he's been through since they split up. Yeah, it's a shame. Liam and Bernice were, very, were a good couple. At the nail bar, they were having a trip down memory lane talking about the good memories that they had before they split up. Then, at one moment, unexpectedly, Liam said he will always be her Mr. Darcy and kissed her on the lips. Bernice did not like that. Oh no. She was furious. To her, Liam was more of a George Wickham rather than a Mr. Darcy. Oh, you're in trouble now, Liam. Meanwhile, Dan was confused when Harriet was flirtatious with him. Mm, yeah. Another couple having trouble. But then at one moment, they decided to have a kiss. 
just as Dan's daughter Amelia walked in, looking for the hairdryer to dry her hair. She asked the question, When did YouTube become a thing? And I can tell you, when she means thing, she means couple. Meanwhile, Faith Dingle wasn't her usual self. As she asked Eric the question, who wants to sink some balls? I mean, I beg your pardon, Faith? What's going for your mind, woman? Hello? Oh, Eric and Faith are going to play golf. <laughs> Silly me. Yes, poor Faith has terminal cancer. And so she wanted to do something with Eric before she died. But we don't know if Faith will die or survive from her cancer. Anyway, she wanted to play golf with Eric, but he had to cancel due to a group booking for lunch. Of course, Faith wasn't happy about that. But eventually, they did go golfing. And had a really good time. But, um, they didn't actually do any golfing. Because they got drunk and drove the buggy right into the village. Very dangerous, I know. But can I just be honest? I'm glad that uh, they didn't do any golfing because we managed to get this video of Eric practicing his golf before we set out to the golf club. <laughs> yeah, he had a haircut after that. <laughs> a place to call home now on drama, and we're going to talk about the episode where having suffered flashbacks from her near-fatal experience with Stan O'Rourke, Sarah finds the strength to embrace her happiness with George. I wonder what Jeffrey, Zippy and Bungle thought of that. Hmm. I thought it was nice to see the Trophy family in Neil Burton's office at the British Medical Association building. Look, there's Mr. Trophy, Mrs. Trophy and their daughter, Winnie. I was surprised to see a house wearing two witches' hats. One big and one small. And if that wasn't surprising enough, the upstairs wall in that house was made of cheese. Cheese, Gromit! At one point during the episode, Doris Collins was driving along in her red car to Harry Paulson's farm. And I thought that was a very nice road she was driving along. Look at this. Wait a minute. Driving a small red vehicle along a country road? That reminds me of something. It's Postman Park! Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Talking of Postman Pat, it looked like that Stephen Mangan got the role as Pat in the live action remake. You just need to change the jacket and hat from black to blue and the shirt from blue to white and you're there! Now I thought the taxi service was a little bit misleading with their name. Yellow Cab Co. More like Gold Cab Co. Holiday Homes in the Sun now on Channel 5. Presented by JB Jill, Sam Pinkham, and the woman that everybody loves, Amanda Lamb! Amanda Lamb, Amanda Lamb. Everybody loves Amanda Lamb. She fits the real and not a sham. That's why everybody loves Amanda Lamb. Amanda who? Amanda Lamb. Amanda Hebb. 
No, Amanda Lamb. If you're in a jam, then call Amanda Lamb. If you're in the car, mommy push you in a pram. Eating pilchers for your dinner or just munching on a yam. By plane or train or tram from Hong Kong to Vietnam. Everybody loves Amanda Lamb. If anyone can do it, man, they can. Yep, that is true. Everybody loves Amanda Lamb. Sorry, JB and Sam, but we haven't got a song for you two. Anyway, in this episode, they're in Beggar, a hidden treasure nestled in northern Catalonia. First of all, they were looking at JB's holiday home, which was located in Pals, which is a medieval village. It had a two-bedroom department, one with a double bed, and one with twin beds. It cost 530 to 1050 pounds per week, and 133 to 263 pounds per person. There was a giant fork as one of the house decorations hanging on the wall. Look at this. Here! That's one of Greg Davis's forks. He'll be looking for that. The terrace had plenty of outdoor furniture and a barbecue. Good, good, I do love a barbecue. This episode was all about views. So let's have a look at the views from JB's holiday home. Hmm, a view over the countryside and the village. Very nice. But I have to warn you, if there are any arsonists around, they might throw petrol over the trees and throw a match over them, and then, woof, the countryside will be on fire. That would really ruin your holiday. A boxing ring? That would ruin your quiet evening. For example, if you're sitting on the terrace, reading a good book, enjoying the warm evening air of the summer, and then you hear, Hello and welcome to this local boxing match! Yes! Then you'd go, Ian, will you keep that noise down? I'm trying to read my book here. No, we can't keep quiet. This is a boxing match, and boxing is not meant to be quiet. Okay, fine, I'll go inside. Now, here's the view from the bedrooms. A view of the village square. Also very nice. Just like the view of the countryside and village. But if it looks like there are people about to throw eggs or other types of food at your window, shut it tightly. Also, it would be very annoying if you're just enjoying your light in and then you hear this bumping at your window. Then you go, What's going on? And then you have to get out of bed, walk up to the window, and say, What's going on? But if you're not careful, <laughs> tomato in your face, probably. <laughs> or an egg. <laughs> or a custard pie. <laughs> Ooh, breakfast! Ooh, ah! Cheers! Now I don't have to do any cooking! 
Now, as ever, they were marking the properties out of 30, and JB's holiday home got, out of 30 marks, 25. So that house is 83% recommended. I did the maths, you see. I'm not clever enough to know that professionally. Next up was Sam's property near the fishing village near Saria, which is famous for scuba diving because the sea there is so clear. It's also popular with cliff jumpers. Hmm, people may enjoy that, but um, who would be stupid enough to jump off a cliff? Oh! I thought of just the very person. Chris from Dubai Hustle! Is that in the book? Let's have, let's have a look at it again. Uh, ah, yes! Jumping off cliffs! I'm so sorry, I forgot to read that out to you earlier on. Sam's house had a lift! I know! A house with a lift! Fancy! If people need a lift, that lift would lift up their spirits! It's another joke! Come on! It's like you don't want to be entertained! It also had an infinity pool, five bedrooms, all with sea views, which sleeps ten people, four bathrooms, two of which have hydro massage bathtubs, and a solarium in one of the garden terraces. It cost 3199 to £5,648 per week and 312 to £565 per person. There was even a cut-out square of the lawn in the kitchen. The marks out of Sam's house was 26 out of 30. So that house is 86% recommended. Then came Amanda's property in Bagur itself. Her holiday home was a historic townhouse and at the back was a walled garden with views over a castle. It had three stories. It slept six. It had big beautiful open plan spaces for people to be together or to have a fight if they really hate each other and then there's the pricing this house cost 1,190 to 3,090 pounds per week and 200 to 550 pounds per person there were also glass panes in the floor which allowed the light to cascade through the building. But it's not very good for a reason or two. Like, for example, if you're just sitting in a chair doing your crossword, and then you look up and see someone who, am who are not dressed yet and just in their pants, so you'd be like... <laughs> Put some clothes on! Huh? Huh? Oh. Oh. I'll put some clothes on right away! I didn't realise there was a glass pane in the floor! Nobody told me that! This property was marked 27 out of 30! So that house is 90% recommended! Oh. Last but not least was the mystery holiday home! <gasps> A mystery holiday home. Oh, now, the surprise may be good or not. Hmm. 
Well, this mystery holiday home was in Bagot itself, and it was a traditional detached Spanish villa with a rustic kitchen and a relatively small living space with a dining table. Okay. There were two double bedrooms, so it slept four. Good. And it had one bathroom. Mm, yeah, you're right. Good. And a toilet. Oh, 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 thank goodness it had a toilet. Otherwise, you'd have to do your business in the garden and wash your hands in the swimming pool. Outside, there was a barbecue, an outdoor dining table and chairs, and you got sea views from the private porch area. Well, it's not private anymore, because it's been mentioned on national television. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. You got sea views from the porch area. It costs 900 to 1,400 pounds per week and 225 to 350 pounds per person. This house had the lowest score. 21 out of 30, 70% recommended. Mm. And then came the winning house of the episode. The winning house was... Amanda's house! Yay! Ah, uh, a happy ending for Amanda Lamb. Well, that's all we've got time for. And to sing us out, Cliff Richard with Summer Holiday! We're all going on a summer holiday No more working for a week or two Fun and laughter on a summer holiday No more worries for me or you For a week or two we're going where the sun shines brightly. We're going where the sea is blue. We've seen it in the movies. Now let's see if it's true. Everybody has a summer holiday. Doing things they always want to do. Cliff so Richard isn't really here. Summer holiday. I said he was singing out because, well, yeah, this is Summer Holiday by Cliff Richard, so, you know what I mean. It's the song to end this week's show. I hope you understand. That's all from us. Good night! <laughs>